Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to show you how to flatten things with a router. Now, this technique is really useful if you don't have a jointer or a planer, or you're trying to flatten something that's not really easy to flatten, such as an end grain cutting board like this. Now, this technique is also useful if you do have those machines, but the thing you're trying to flatten is just too wide for either your jointer or your planer or both. So let me start walking you through the process and show you the setup, and I think you'll see that this is a very simple technique. So here's what you're going to need. You need a flat surface to reference your jig off of. In this case, I'm using my assembly table, but any flat surface in your shop will work well. Um, maybe a workbench or a table saw top. The next thing you're going to need are a set of rails. Uh, these don't have to be anything special. The only thing here is that they need to be straight, they need to be flat, and they need to be exactly the same thickness. And you're also going to need to make a little cradle for your router. All this is are three pieces of plywood. The rails on the outsides here are four inches wide and three feet long. And then the bottom piece is eight inches wide and three feet long as well. And you'll notice in the bottom here, there's a slot cut for the bit to go through. Uh, my, my jig here is 25 inches across and you'll notice that the slot is offset because the bit in the router base is offset as well. The key thing to making this jig or this whole setup work is that flatness concept. The flatness from your reference surface to the rails to the jig needs to be consistent because any deviation in any of these components is going to affect how flat you're able to get your workpiece. Now obviously you can have some deviation there, it's not going to matter a whole lot, but just keep that in mind. If your rail is bowed, you're going to end up putting a bow into your workpiece. And now the last thing you're going to need, of course, is a router. I have mine set up here with a inch and a half diameter straight bit. You can use any size straight bit you'd like. Just keep in mind that the wider the bit, the faster you'll be able to go over the workpiece. But you could certainly do this with a quarter inch bit. It would just take you six times longer than this. <laughs> so you can see that the router itself simply rides inside of the sled, just like this. And then you're able to move the router back and forth over your workpiece with the bit protruding through the base of the sled and cut the top of the workpiece. And that'll give you a nice flat reference surface. All right, to set this up for actually cutting something, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp my rails to my assembly table. And then the workpiece I'm gonna to use today, just as a little demonstration, is this piece of cherry. Now you can see this piece of cherry has a twist in it. It has a high spot on these two corners. So I need to make sure that this thing doesn't move around on me while I'm routing. So I'm going to put a couple pieces of double stick tape um, between the workpiece and the table. And I'm also going to use these shims to basically just stabilize each corner just to make sure it doesn't rock anymore. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is set the depth of cut. To do that, I'm going to look at my piece here and I'm going to see where the lowest corner is or where the lowest point on the piece is. And I think that's this corner back here. So what I'm going to do is plunge my router down until the bit contacts the workpiece and then I'll set my depth. After setting the depth, I can begin passing the router over the workpiece. I make a pass, move the sled, and then make the next pass until I have covered the entire surface of the piece. You may also notice that I had to raise my board up a little bit by placing a piece of plywood underneath it because my bit couldn't reach the surface of the board just due to the thickness of the rails I was using. All right, so let's look at the workpiece here. Let's move the router out of the way. You can see my setup is not totally perfect. There are some ridges here, which means that my router isn't totally perpendicular uh, to the base probably, or the bit's not totally right or something. So it's a little out of whack, but overall it's pretty good. Let's see how flat it is. Let me pull it out of here. There, look at that. Pretty good, there's a little bit left in there, probably for my setup, or actually there's a bit of glue here on my table. <laughs> yeah, no, that's pretty good now, look at that. The twist is totally gone, and that's flat now. So at this point, if you didn't have a jointer, you would do this and then send this to the planer like that with this new flat reference surface on the bed of the planer. But of course, if you don't have a planer, you could use this jig as a planer as well. Once you have your flat surface uh, figured out, you can put that side down onto your table again 
I need to bring in my, my little platform here to raise it up. But I can put it on my platform again and plane it flat. So to get the thickness for your router, all you would need to do is bring in a piece of stock that you know is three quarters of an inch thick or whatever thickness you're going for. Bring your router sled over and then plunge down until the bit contacts that piece. And now when you bring your workpiece back in and you run your router over it again, that'll leave you with your three quarter inch finished thickness or whatever thickness you had set it for. So another instance where this will really help you out is for flattening something like an end grain cutting board. Uh, in this case, this is a little thicker than my rails, so I'm just going to add these little shims here on top just to raise the height of my rails. Okay, so I can bring my router over the workpiece and then come over where I think my low spot is and lower the router until it contacts. Now the process is going to be exactly the same, so I'll go through that real quick. There we go. See my bit wasn't quite set deep enough so I have a little bit left here that I could clean up with the second pass. Uh, but it would be just as easy now to just flip the board over and then do the other side. But this board is flat. It does not rock at all. So the one thing to note about this router sled is that the bottom piece is going to vary in width depending on the base plate of your router. You want to cut the bottom piece so it's wide enough to fit your router in there with a little bit of play and then to have these two pieces uh, attached to the side. And these are just screwed and glued on. So I hope you found this useful and I hope you can see how you can flatten things in your workshop uh, given any kind of limitations you might have. Maybe you don't have a jointer, maybe you don't have a planer, maybe you don't have either of them, maybe you have one but not the other, or maybe you have something that you want to use that is just too wide for either of your machines. That's another instance where this would come in really handy. And that is in fact how most of those giant slab tables are made using just a basic sled like this and a router. Now the sled itself is pretty simple. You can probably do a lot of different things to improve upon it. The one thing that I really don't like about it is that there is no dust collection and this thing makes an absolute mess. <laughs> so thanks for watching as always. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything in my other videos, please leave me a comment. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.